today on Divorce Court. Chelsea's always accusing me of cheating, and I'm just sick of it. I can't do anything. I'm not running around with other guys, so I don't think he should be running around with other women. Every time I try to tell her how I feel, she tells me I'm wrong. I absolutely hate that he watches porn. Chelsea is a CIA agent. Whatever I do, she needs a video of it, with my movements, where I go. I mean, I'm talking about the whole nine yards. I don't want him trying to seek other women. I just want me and him to be able to just be happy together with our children. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Chelsea Kent and K.J. Morris, Jr. The two of you have been together for eight years. You have three children together. Now it is a hot mess. Ms. Kent, why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why you're here today? Um, like you said, we've been together eight years off and on. Um, I love K.J. with all my heart. Um, we have a beautiful family together, but... You know, he's constantly cheating on me and, like, finding any reason to talk to other women, and I'm, I'm just tired of it. When is the first time he cheated on you? Um, back in 2009, um, when we had first gotten together, uh, he had a girl that was claiming to be his girlfriend, and I asked him. He told me that she was just some female that likes him, so I had him call her on the phone and ask her, you know, why she was saying those things. She said that they were together, and then he basically told her, you know, I'm not with you, and that was that. And then about two weeks later, I ended up finding out that, you know, he slept with her. She got my mom's number out of my, out of his phone and called my mom's house, being very disrespectful to her, and told now, me. Now, Ms. Kent, how long had you been with him when that happened? That was about two weeks. Now, that's drop kickable to me. Wow. You got a two-week relationship. He showed you who he was. I'm like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. What? Why did you stay? I ask myself that every day. I honestly don't know. Dating is for watching. <laughs> you just watch them. The minute they do something stupid, you go. We started... <laughs> KJ and I started out as friends. So we were friends for about a year before we even started dating. So we had already kind of built that, you know, built that friendship. So. And then you stay friends after you drop him. Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> People are what they do. Mm -hmm. And if they do stuff to you and you just fighting like you're fighting for your life to keep them, it's, it's not a good sign. It's a, not a good signal for the future. How often do you believe? Well, first of all, before we go there, Mr. Morris, is that an accurate story? Yes, it is an accurate story. I did cheat, and but my justification is when we first got together, I was letting her know I didn't want to be in a serious relationship. And she was stressing to me about being in a relationship, being in a relationship, she likes me, and all of that stuff, of things of that nature. And I was telling her, I like you too, I want to date you, but I don't want to be... Exclusive. Right, correct. And she's like, no, no. And so she was so persistent, that I just said, okay, let's go. Let ahead. me ask you, let, let, let me ask you this, Miss Kent. You said you knew him for a year. During that year that you knew him as a friend, did he date around with a lot of different women? Not that I knew of. I knew of the girl that I spoke of earlier. I knew of her, but as far as I knew, that she was just a girl that liked him and they were not in a relationship. So you never knew him to be a guy who travels about and has a lot of different no. women? No. I didn't. <laughs> I really didn't. And How long after that first cheat did he cheat again? Um, after that, we ended up... We stayed together, and he cheated on me again probably about another two weeks later. Oh. And then we broke I don't... Up. That, that's not right. Yeah. That's okay. not right. Not at all. Well, what do you and say happened? We ended up, and then we ended up breaking up after that. And I ended up going, we went our separate ways, but we were still talking, we were still hanging out. And then um, I had went out of state, and then we were talking while I was out of state. I came back, and when I came back, we ended up getting back together because I got pregnant with our daughter. Oh. Mr. Morris, is that basically what happened? Yes, yes, that, that's what happened. She had uh, moved out of state, and when she came back, we decided to pick up things from where uh, she left off, and we happened to have our first daughter. Were you alarmed when you got pregnant? Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting it. It was, definitely wasn't planned. Well, 
Were you using birth control? No. Uh, <laughs> unexpected. That's like going out on the freeway at rush hour and not expecting to get hit. Yeah. That's where you get hit. Yeah. On the freeway, rush hour, you have sex, you get pregnant. Yeah. But she's not telling the whole truth. Though, well, you yeah. tell me the whole truth. All right, well, when we first got together, um, I didn't have no suspicions of her doing anything like that, of that nature, but I, I did find some evidence of her cheating, so to speak. When she was out of town? No, before that. Before that, yes. okay. And, um, and so, and so when that happened, I was like, okay, or whatever, since you want to talk to whoever you want to talk to, then I, I can too, because I didn't want to have an exclusive relationship to begin with. Mm -hmm. So were sure. you seeing somebody else during that period we of time? We were not together at that time. You were on a break. Yeah, I guess. So. You were broken up. Yeah. You were we seeing were somebody saying. else. Yeah, when, yeah we, when... were, we were basically just friends at the time. But were we... you having unprotected sex with that person too? No. No, I was not. He literally makes me feel like I'm not good enough. Like, we'll have sex and like 10, 20 minutes later, he's in the bathroom that, watching porn. That, that's and not that happens true. all the time. There's times where I'll be like, come on, you know, let's do it. He'll be like, oh, that's I'm not, not in the mood right okay. now. You say he has a porn, webcam, token, live model addiction. Tell me all about that. Yes, he does. Um, first thing, waking up in the morning, he grabs his phone, he goes straight into the bathroom. And That's I, not true. And I know as soon as he does that, he's going in there to watch porn. Um, I've caught him several times. I've been, I was sitting on the couch one day with my kids, and our emails are connected. So anytime he does something, I Why get an email. That? Anytime he does something, I get an email. So I got the email that he had purchased some tokens, which are, you know, basically like virtual money for this live, live webcam site. Right. So he goes on there. You can see all the girls in the different rooms, you know, showing you nasty things, whatever they're doing in there. And he goes in there and watches them. If you choose to, you can make a, a like a sign in and you mm -hmm. can buy tokens. So that's what he did. He bought tokens and he went on there and he bought this girl's for life, which to where she can send him dirty pictures anytime he wants them. Lifetime porn? No, I never got no porn because the way the the way this was set up was I I went to I will browse came upon this website. And just happened by, just, just breezed on by you. Well, I just see the chat room, so I click on chat rooms and a bunch of pictures, thumbnails of f different females come up. So I was like, okay, so let's try this one. And I enter the, the room and I just see conversations going on. There's no inappropriate thing, she's just talking. So I'm just hanging out for a little while, see what they talk about things of that nature. And then I get off, nothing Probably happened. Probably in the bathroom for 30 minutes. Nothing happened, I get out, I get off, and, and she finds it that I went on this website through my email on my phone or something like that. And she tells me about these token things. I was like, what are you talking about? Tokens, what tokens? I just went into the room, and she's like, you bought tokens? I was like, I didn't buy no tokens. And then when she went into the living room, then I went back to the site, to see what and she was talking about. Tokens. And then, oh, and then okay. that's when I bought the tokens to see if she was telling the truth. Now, Mr. Morris, you sound so might I suggest the next so time right you now. ever appear before a judge, you get a better story. Please. Because you mean, might find yourself incarcerated. I mean. You can't just say you're humbled up on this site from you know, one level to another level to another level. You come back and then do it again. You, but, you, you, you were enjoying was, the content. Well, don't, I don't, mean, don't try to well, tell I, me you were like a puppy in a room with a bunch of chew toys. Well, you were enjoying the content. It. But he but but me, but that is how it happened. He though. literally makes me feel like I'm not good enough. Like we'll have sex and like 10, 20 minutes later he's in the bathroom that, watching porn. That, that's and not that happens true. all the time. There's times where I'll be like, come on, you know, let's do it. He'll be like, oh, I'm that's not in not, the mood right okay. now. That's I'm not, not true. No 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 no. I got I got an idea about what you watch. Well, it's, uh, it's for that, a fantasy purpose. It's not for just just because she's not good enough. I've I never say she's not good enough. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Plus she used to be a exotic dancer. Stop. Now I want to turn to those three children you have and what is and is not going on in your household. How come you lost your own place? Um, I would constantly find that he was talking to other girls no. while I was at work, you know, no, even bringing true. them to my house. Don't tell me you quit work to keep an eye on it. I did, yep. Yes. Oh! oh!
Ms. Kent, you say that Mr. Moore, you have those three children, you're a stay-at-home mom, uh, but you say he doesn't help with them at all. Why don't you tell me what's going on with, that, with respect to that? Um, I'm not going to say he doesn't help at all. He helps, but as far as, like, getting up in the morning, getting them dressed, feeding them, changing their diapers, I do all of that. Um, there's times, like, my, I have an 11-month-old, so if I'm busy doing something, he'll put my 11-month-old to sleep while he plays his game. So, you know, he helps here and there. But for the most part, they're my kids. They're my responsibility. You know, he didn't necessarily want me to have these kids. So when it comes to doing things with them and taking that, care of them or him going out and leaving me at home with them, he's perfectly fine with doing that because well, they're my kids. That, Mr. Morris, you, your response to that? That's because I work Monday through Friday and I get off about 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, I get home. and. And I don't think the house should be a mess when I get off of work. I think while I'm at work, she should be in charge of the household, meaning the cleaning, cooking, getting the kids ready, doing their hair if they're not going nowhere, mm -hmm. or things of that nature. Because as I was growing up, I get home from school, my mom's chilling watching TV, but the house is a complete neat. Everything's clean. Everything's up. cool. So everything's get your cool. Stuff done. Right. So when I try to get a dish, it's like, boy, don't don't touch that dish. You better get a plastic cup or a paper right, cut. Right, right. But when I get home from my house, dishes all in the scene. Is it a hot it... mess when he comes home? It is, I'm not gonna lie. Um, uh, why is it a hot mess? Because uh, it's, it's hard for me to clean and take care of four kids, to be honest. Even when I had three, it's hard to constantly be on them. Like, all my kids are under the age of seven. I have a seven-year-old, I have a five-year-old, I have a three-year-old, and I You know, you're not the first four. woman to have a couple of kids no, that were young, and they still seem able to clean that. I had a full-time job and two kids yeah. and kept the house together. Yes, you know what I'm that. saying? That's what I'm saying. And that, mm -hmm. That's my biggest flaw. You, you, my you biggest have to handle your cleaning. business. Yeah, my biggest flaw is cleaning. So yeah. I, I do admit that. Your business. I, well, I Mr. Mr. Morris, you say not only is cleaning is the problem, but that, that she doesn't discipline them, that, 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 that there's, there's chaos in the home okay. when you're not in it. Correct. Yes. I, I feel like if, if I'm not there, there's no structure. Like, the kids be running around in their pajamas, diapers are saggy, and things of that nature, and their hair not, not even done. That's like, not our true. daughter... I change my kids' diapers. That's not true. Yeah, when you want to. I don't do their to. hair, and I don't get them dressed if, it, if they're not going anywhere, because I feel like... If we're just sitting around the house, why do they got to put on brand new clothes that because, they're just going to wear? Because let me, it let me, is the structure me that your kids I'll, I'll, need to... I'll, I'll tell you why you have to do that. Because all their lives, they're going to have to do structured things. All their lives, they're going to have to, to, to hit a clock or hit, you know, they have to work, they have, they to, have to... And you teach them a work ethic by, this is what we do every morning. We put our hair together, we pull our, 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 our beds yeah, up, we do that. You Every teach day. them how to live in this world by how you conduct their business. And that's how you I know was what raised. I'm saying? Yeah. So you got, you can't. <laughs> don't teach them to, you know, don't teach them to sit in a boat in the Colorado River and expect things to turn out because you're just sitting there. You've always got to make them paddle just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Because you end up on the rocks. <laughs> I don't think you paddle too much. <laughs> I think your life happens to you. Without so much, you're, you're, you're pointing yourself in a direction, say, this is where I want to go. Do you think that might be true? Yeah. You're living in his mom's house, right? Mm -hmm. how, how come you lost your own place? Um, I would constantly find that he was talking to other girls no. while I was at work, you know, no, even bringing true. them to my house. Don't tell me you quit work to keep an eye on him. I did, yep. Yes, oh! she did. Oh! Yep. Mm -hmm. Because yep. I you quit like, him so you can go to work. Yep. Why should I work when he's bringing girls to my house? But, uh, Your Honor, she, I, I, no, Your Honor, I was in the she, hospital having my. She is like I was the, in the CIA. Having I'm, my baby, my baby, and no. he's sitting here texting the girl back from 2009. He's sitting there no. texting her. Okay, I got I it. I tell him, let me see your phone so I can take a picture of you and the baby. I go to take a picture, and I see the message: "Baby's out on my way." Texting the girl this. So what's your response to the texting another woman while your your wife was giving birth story? Okay, well, I was texting my friend because just was, she was concerned about, or not concerned, but congratulating me, us together, as on um, bringing a new child into the world. 
that's all there was. It wasn't no, I'm on my way, or she's out, I'm, I'm coming to you. It wasn't no things of that nature. Did he stay or did he leave? He left. Well, not not to go to her house. Right. I went home to tell, let my mom know the good news and things of that nature. Oh, you and, could have texted And then I came let, back. Let, let, let me go, let me go. Let, I, I'm all done, I'm all done, I'm all done. <laughs> Ms. Kent, you're fighting the wrong battle. <laughs> you are fighting the wrong battle. And I'm not mad at you. And I'm gonna go, come across as all aggressive in here, but I'm passionate about this thing. And there are so many young women in your circumstance. You're fighting the wrong battle. You know you're in a situation that is totally dependent upon him. You quit your job, you had a bunch of kids, you're in his mother's house, and you have... So you're scared to death that you're not gonna be okay. And the only thing that you think will make you okay is staying with him. So you've got to battle everything he does, everywhere he goes, because that's the only thing keeping a roof over your head. That's not the battle that you have to fight. The battle that you have to fight is with yourself. You have to fight a battle to get educated, to get smarter, to get, to get more under your belt, so you can work, and so you can feel better about yourself. If he knows you can't go anywhere, he has no reason to behave any better than he does. None. And in fighting to keep him, you're fighting all the rest of the world, making him miserable on a daily basis, which will more likely make him leave than just you feeling better about yourself. If he's running around out there, it'll come to light soon enough. But nagging him about it is not gonna change his moral character. It's gonna give him more reason to find a soft, quiet place to go. They'll use it as an excuse. Mr. Morris, you need to do better. You've got a woman who's scared to death all of the time. And that fear is showing up as nagging and investigating. She's doing that because she's horrified on the constant. You have children who are relying on someone who is weak and about to wilt. Do you want to do that to your kids? Do you oh, want man. your daughters to, re to realize that they can go out with a guy who can go out with other people and you can be sad and crazy and looking and all that other thing, and that's how you got to live? No. Because that's what you're teaching them. So if you don't be better, your kids won't get better. You need to treat that woman better because she's holding up your kids. <laughs> don't make a weaker. Don't run around. Don't do what you have to do. You had those babies with her. So you got to act like a man and treat her like a, a good woman. You hear me? Yes, ma'am. Woman up. I mean, all the way up. Have no more children until no, you're up and out and over it. Be a better man. This matter is adjourned. The judge said that I deserve better, and honestly, part of me wants to leave, but I love him a lot, so I'm gonna try to do everything I can to make it work. The judge told me to be a better man, so I'm gonna stop watching so much porn and treat her better, because it is for our daughters. And the cheating aspect, I'm gonna try to communicate with her better and tell her the frustrations that I have, and I'll try not to go out as much. This is my life, that's why I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs>